The driving iron, my favorite club in the bag. Do you need a club that is an anti-left golf club? Do you need a gap between your furry wood and your longest iron in your bag? You're gonna definitely wanna watch this video. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today we have a great comparison comparing four different driving iron models. In my hands I have the Ping G425 crossover, the Callaway X-Forge Utility, the Strixon ZX Utility, and the TaylorMade Sim UDI crossover irons. It's gonna be a great comparison because, let's face it, a lot of golfers don't like to play a hybrid because they may hook it too much, especially those faster club speed golfers. They wanna try and find something that can gap between their furry wood and the longest iron in their bag. I love a driving iron. I love playing that club when I'm trying to hit the ball 250 to 260 yards just straight down the fairway. That was crushed. Why do I always crush the first one? Maybe I have a creek that runs across the fairway or a bunker that I want to lay up short of. It's a great option to get yourself in play to leave yourself a great layup for your next golf shot. Let's hit them all and compare the data. First up, I've got the Strixon ZX Utility Driving Iron. Now for today's test, it's gonna be a little different with regards to shaft weight. Now these clubs are all bonded, so these are all our kind of demo clubs that we've got. So the weight's not gonna be the exact same. A couple of these are graphite and one is a steel, a lighter steel golf shaft. So it's not gonna be perfect for regards to weight, but it's gonna be a great comparison comparing these models to figure out which one is going to perform better. Maybe which one's gonna spin a little bit less, fly a little higher, and go a little bit straighter. I'm going to start with the Strix on the ZX and hit some shots. That was crushed. Why do I always crush the first one? Those three in a row are pretty good. Those three circles, those last three swings are all right next to each other. First off, I just wanna say these irons are so incredibly easy for a higher swing speed golfer to hit the ball straighter. The dispersion pattern on the screen really doesn't do justice to showcase just how straight these shots were. And a lot of players don't realize that tour professionals, they only hit about 60% of their fairways. If we look at the dispersion pattern with this, these driving irons here, We'll notice there's only one dot that's outside of 15 yards left or 15 yards to the right of the center. And there's only one, and it was only just outside of it too. So just showcases how easy it is to hit these irons straighter for a faster club speed golfer. But let's first talk about the, the look comparing the, these models. So first thing is I'm looking down at the models. The one thing that definitely stands out to me, the Ping G425 crossover definitely looks like it's the largest profile and the kind of the most forgiving model to look at. So when I'm looking down at, the, at them, I'm noticing when I'm seeing this here, it's got a little bit thicker top line, just seems really easy to hit ball straight. And I did hit three in a row with this model that were all right next to each other. So you gotta take a look at those three purple dots that are all right next to each other. Those were three shots in a row. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, the most compact looking one is the Strixon ZX Utility. That thing was hot. I was really impressed. And you'll notice that it actually went the furthest there as well. So really kind of interesting with this test, this was three iron utilities. Three of the four had 20 degrees of loft on. The Callaway X-Forged Utility had 21 degrees of loft on it. And the other interesting thing with the Callaway X-Forged Utility as well is the shaft was a little bit heavier, as I mentioned. This one was steel, while the other three were graphite. I really did a great job to try and get my club speed about the same with them. 
but I definitely felt like I had to swing out of my shoes to get the club speed up because this definitely felt a little bit heavier. And maybe we'll do a video in the future comparing a graphite shaft with a utility iron versus a steel shaft with a utility iron. But let's take a look at numbers and see if anything stands out to us. As I mentioned, the club speed's all separated by about half a mile an hour at the absolute most. Um, the ball speed, the highest ball speed came with the Strixon ZX Utility. Very, very hot, 148.7 miles an hour, while the other three were just, just a little bit less, about 148.3, 148.1. As you can tell, pretty close with regards to the, the ball speed numbers there. Um, very, very efficient. I was, I was smoking it today. I was feeling it with my golf swing, and these are some incredible golf shots that I hit. Uh, one thing you also find interesting is the Strixon ZX Utility did launch a little bit lower than the other, other ones, and the G425 crossover launched the highest. Now, once again, they're all separated pretty close to together there because the laughs are all pretty close together. The one thing that really did stand out to me, though, was the spin rate. The spin rate definitely did influence the distance the irons were going. So if you take a look here, you notice the Strixon ZX Utility had the lowest amount of spin at 3160. The crossover was just a little bit more, while the Sim UDI and the Callaway X Forge Utility had a little higher spin. So you'll notice when I had less spin, the ball one carried further, but also rolled out further there too. So 267.6 was the highest total distance. That was the Strixon ZX Utility. And then you'll look at the other end of the spectrum, the Callaway X Forge Utility, 258.8. So it was almost 10 yards shorter. And then the loft is also one degree weaker. So every degree of loft usually about three to four yards. So you'll notice because it was spinning a little bit higher, uh, it was going just a little bit shorter. So you can kind of see that over here on the dispersion pattern a little bit too. As I mentioned, these are probably the 20 best shots that I've hit with driving irons in a long time. I just hit 19 of 20 fairways if I was playing a fairway that is 30 yards wide. You'll notice there was only one that was outside and that was just outside. But if you look at dispersion, the one thing that stands out to me the most is the Callaway X-Forge Utility. How straight that was. I mean, we're talking probably 10 yards left to 10 yards right at the absolute most. Absolute was in the middle of the fairway on a very, very tight fairway. If we look at the others, the Sim UDI was also very, very tight with regards to direction. We just noticed there was a couple outliers where the ball was going a little longer left and a little bit shorter right. But once again, they're in the fairway, and that's what matters when you're hitting these clubs, especially when you're trying to hit it off the tee and you're trying to lay up short of a bunker. I mentioned the 260 mark. As you can tell, I was hitting it just a little bit over 260. So as I mentioned, these utility irons are hot. So it is important to get fit and figure out the right distance gapping in your bag. It may be a three iron utility, it may be a two iron utility, or it may be a four iron utility. But it's a great option to compare the distances at second swing, we've got all the options. So we have all the options to compare the different lofts, compare the different shaft flexes, and compare the different models against each other to see which one is kind of performing the best. Some are designed to fly a little higher, some are designed to fly a little lower. My goal with my driving iron is to get the thing in the fairway, not crazy high, just get that thing to roll out there around about 260 yards and get it in play. So talk with a club fitter, figure out what you're trying to achieve with your golf game, Come on and get fit like a pro.